Planetary mass is a measure of the mass of a planet-like object. Within the solar system, planets are usually measured in the astronomical system of units, where the unit of mass is the solar mass m, the mass of the Sun. In the study of extrasolar planets, the unit of measure is typically the mass of Jupiter Mj for large gas giant planets, and the mass of Earth m for smaller rocky terrestrial planets. The mass of a planet within the solar system is an adjusted parameter in the preparation of ephemerides. There are three variations of how planetary mass can be calculated. If the planet has natural satellites, its mass can be calculated using Newton's law of universal gravitation to derive a generalization of Kepler's third law that includes the mass of the planet and its moon. This permitted an early measurement of Jupiter's mass, as measured in units of the solar mass. The mass of a planet can be inferred from its effect on the orbits of other planets. In 1931-1948 flawed applications of this method led to incorrect calculations of the mass of Pluto. Data from influence collected from the orbits of space probes can be used. Examples include Voyager probes to the outer planets and the Messenger spacecraft to Mercury. Also, numerous other methods can give reasonable approximations. For instance, Varuna, a potential dwarf planet, rotates very quickly upon its axis, as does the dwarf planet Haumea. Haumea has to have a very high density in order not to be ripped apart by centrifugal forces. Through some calculations, one can place a limit on the object's density. Thus, if the object's size is known, a limit on the mass can be determined. See the links in the aforementioned articles for more details on this. Topic. Choice of units The choice of solar mass, m, as the basic unit for planetary mass comes directly from the calculations used to determine planetary mass. In the most precise case, that of the Earth itself, the mass is known in terms of solar masses to 12 significant figures, the same mass, in terms of kilograms or other Earth-based units, is only known to 5 significant figures, which is less than a millionth as precise, the difference comes from the way in which planetary masses are calculated. It is impossible to weigh a planet, and much less the Sun, against the sort of mass standards which are used in the laboratory. On the other hand, the orbits of the planets give a great range of observational data as to the relative positions of each body, and these positions can be compared to their relative masses using Newton's law of universal gravitation with small corrections for general relativity where necessary. To convert these relative masses to Earth-based units such as the kilogram, it is necessary to know the value of the Newtonian gravitational constant, g. This constant is remarkably difficult to measure in practice, and its value is only known to a precision of one part in 10,000. The solar mass is quite a large unit on the scale of the solar system, 1.9884 2 times 1030 kg. The largest planet, Jupiter, is 0.09% the mass of the Sun, while the Earth is about 3 millionths 0.0003% of the mass of the Sun. Various different conventions are used in the literature to overcome this problem, for example, inverting the ratio so that one quotes the planetary mass in the number of planets it would take to make up one Sun. Here, we have chosen to list all planetary masses in microsuns that is the mass of the Earth is just over 3 microsuns, or 3 millionths of the mass of the Sun, unless they are specifically quoted in kilograms. When comparing the planets among themselves, it is often convenient to use the mass of the Earth M -E or M as a standard, particularly for the terrestrial planets. For the mass of gas giants, and also for most extrasolar planets and brown dwarfs, the mass of Jupiter MJ is a convenient comparison. Topic. Planetary mass and planet formation The mass of a planet has consequences for its structure by having a large mass, especially while it is in the hand of process of formation. 
A body which is more than about one ten thousandth of the mass of the Earth can overcome its compressive strength and achieve hydrostatic equilibrium, it will be roughly spherical, and since 2006 has been classified as a dwarf planet if it orbits around the Sun, that is, if it is not the satellite of another planet. Smaller bodies like asteroids are classified as small solar system bodies. A dwarf planet, by definition, is not massive enough to have gravitationally cleared its neighboring region of planetesimals, it is not known quite how large a planet must be before it can effectively clear its neighborhood, but one-tenth of the Earth's mass is certainly sufficient. The smaller planets retain only silicates, and are terrestrial planets like Earth or Mars, though multiple ME super-Earths have been discovered. The interior structure of rocky planets is mass-dependent, for example, plate tectonics may require a minimum mass to generate sufficient temperatures and pressures for it to occur. If the protoplanet grows by accretion to more than about 5 to 10 m, its gravity become large enough to retain hydrogen in its atmosphere. In this case, it will grow into a gas giant. If the planet then begins migration, it may move well within its system's frost line, and become a hot Jupiter orbiting very close to its star, then gradually losing small amounts of mass as the star's radiation strips its atmosphere. The theoretical minimum mass a star can have, and still undergo hydrogen fusion at the core, is estimated to be about 75 megajoules, though fusion of deuterium can occur at masses as low as 13 Jupiters. Topic. Values from the DE405 ephemeris The DE405, LE405 ephemeris from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory is a widely used ephemeris dating from 1998 and covering the whole solar system. As such, the planetary masses form a self-consistent set, which is not always the case for more recent data see below. Topic. Earth mass and lunar mass Where a planet has natural satellites, its mass is usually quoted for the whole system planet plus satellites, as it is the mass of the whole system which acts as a perturbation on the orbits of other planets. The distinction is very slight, as natural satellites are much smaller than their parent planets as can be seen in the table above, where only the largest satellites are even listed. The Earth and the Moon form a case in point, partly because the Moon is unusually large just over 1% of the mass of the Earth in relation to its parent planet compared with other natural satellites. There are also very precise data available for the Earth-Moon system, particularly from the Lunar Laser Ranging Experiment LLR. The geocentric gravitational constant, the product of the mass of the Earth times the Newtonian gravitational constant, can be measured to high precision from the orbits of the Moon and of artificial satellites. The ratio of the two masses can be determined from the slight wobble in the Earth's orbit caused by the gravitational attraction of the Moon. Topic. More recent values. The construction of a full, high-precision solar system ephemeris is an onerous task. It is possible, and somewhat simpler, to construct partial ephemerides which only concern the planets or dwarf planets, satellites, asteroids of interest by fixing the motion of the other planets in the model. The two methods are not strictly equivalent, especially when it comes to assigning uncertainties to the results, however, the best Estimates, at least in terms of quoted uncertainties in the result, for the masses of minor planets and asteroids usually come from partial ephemerides. Nevertheless, new complete ephemerides continue to be prepared, most notably the EPM-2004 ephemeris from the Institute of Applied Astronomy of the Russian Academy of Sciences. EPM-2004 is based on 317,014 separate observations between 1913 and 2003, more than seven times as many as DE-405, and gave more precise masses for Ceres and five asteroids. <laughs> IAU Current Best Estimates 2009. 
A new set of current best estimates for various astronomical constants was approved the 27th General Assembly of the International Astronomical Union IAU in August 2009. It includes masses for all the planets except the Earth-Moon system, as well as Eris, Pluto, Ceres, Vesta and Pallas. Values for the masses of Eris, Pluto, Ceres, Vesta and Pallas are as given in the table above. Except for those of Mercury and Uranus, all the planetary masses have been revised since the DE 405 ephemeris 1998. The ratio of the mass of the Moon to the mass of the Earth is given as 1.23000371 times 10 minus 2, while the ratio of the mass of the Sun to the mass of the Earth can be calculated as the ratio of the heliocentric and geocentric gravitational constants, 332.9460487 times 103, giving the mass of the Earth as 3.00348696. 6 times 10 minus 6 m or 5.9722 6 times 1024 kilogram. Topic. See also. Astronomical system of units. Standard gravitational parameter. Equals equals notes. <laughs>